In a previous video, I showed you how the Llama Tees t-shirt company based in Ontario, Canada was able to make use of both Stripe Tax and Stripe Checkout to sell their custom t-shirts online. Well, things have been going pretty good and now they want to be able to offer subscription boxes. So in this particular video, we're going to see how they could use their existing investments in Stripe to be able to offer that service to their customers. Inside of the Stripe dashboard for the Llama Tees clothing company, we'll notice that they've added a few items to their product catalog. Specifically, the three items that they've added, Voyager, Explorer, and Nomad, all represent pricing tiers for the subscription service that they want to offer. Let's go ahead and take a look at one of these. Now, inside of Voyager, we can see that this one is worth 140 Canadian dollars a month. If we scroll down into the details, we'll notice that the marketing feature list outlines some of the perks for subscribing to this particular tier. The product code is also set to clothing and footwear, which is going to be important. And our custom label is set to box because every month our customer is going to get a box with the products for that month. Let's scroll down and take a look at the price. If I hit details and I'm just going to edit price. On the right side, just like before, we're seeing the preview of what exactly our customers are going to get charged if they decide to go with this particular tier. If you remember from a previous video, the Lama Tees clothing company is doing business out in Canada and it has tax registrations in a few different provinces. In this case, it's going to be Quebec and British Columbia. If we toggle between these two, we can see the amount of tax that customers will get charged for this particular product depending on where they're doing business. Let's go ahead and close this for now. Let's head back over to the product catalog. Now what we'll do with these three subscription pricing tiers is add them to our pricing table. Now, a pricing table is just a convenient way for us to display the different options that are available to our customers. Here you can see I've created one already, but we're not going to use that one. Let's go ahead and create a brand new one that we're going to embed into our application. Now, inside of products here on the left side, I'm just going to select the three pricing tiers that we have available. So there's Voyager, Explorer, and there's also Nomad. Notice that the preview of the pricing table lists them from lowest to highest price automatically, regardless of the order that I added them to the pricing table. Let's scroll down a little bit. Notice we have the options to change the branding. By default, it's going to use the display settings and branding information that was already set up previously for this company. I'm going to go ahead and hit continue. Now we have the option to continually tweak this some more. Notice that we have collect tax automatically already enabled, but we have the option to get more information as well. One of the things that I want to do is make sure that I'm collecting customer addresses. I need the billing and shipping address. And this is important because we need to know where to send their boxes every month. Now, we're only shipping to Canada right now, so I'm going to go ahead and select that. And we can keep on scrolling down. And there's tons of other options that we could set. Now, for the time being, we've only done this for Voyager. So I need to go ahead and make sure the same thing is set for all these other ones. So I'm going to go ahead and hit billing and shipping. Canada for the Explorer one. And I'm also going to do the same thing for Nomad, right? Collect customer addresses, billing and shipping, and Canada. Save. For us, that's all we need for now. If you want to make use of the customer portal, you can enable it here or disable it if you want. In this video, we're not going to make use of it, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it off. Now we'll hit finish. Now what we should have is a snippet of code that we can paste inside of our application to include that pricing table. I'm going to go ahead and copy that code and let's include it in our application inside of VS Code. I'm just going to go ahead and paste that HTML snippet inside of my checkout.html file. Let's go ahead and run this and see what it looks like. I'm going to go ahead and hit debug. Let's run this. Now my application is running on port 4242. Let's go ahead and open this. And here's what the pricing table would look like live on a website. It's showing us the various pricing tiers available, descriptions, and all the different subscription perks available for subscribers depending on which option they go with. I'm going to go ahead and select this one in the middle. Let's go with the Explorer version. Now, this might look a little familiar, but now we've been redirected to the Stripe checkout page. Let's go ahead and fill out some basic information. I'm going to put in a fake address for a customer in Quebec. Now, notice as I update the address, on the left side, it's updating the total and showing me the right amount of tax that I need to pay. What happens if we come back in and change this address? Let's go with a customer that's in British Columbia. And again, the amount of tax that's getting charged has been updated based on wherever we're doing business. Now, I'm going to go ahead and enter my credit card information. 
I want the billing address and the shipping address to be the same. And now I'll go ahead and hit subscribe. And now that that checkout is completed, I get redirected back to the confirmation page. Let's head back over to the Stripe dashboard and see what this kind of looks like. I'm going to head over to customers. And obviously I need to come up with more creative names for my test customers. But this is the one that we just did. Here inside of the customer details, I can see that this particular customer has an Active Explorer subscription. Now that's great, but what now? We probably should validate this customer subscription so products could start getting shipped to their address. Well, let's head over to Visual Studio to see how we can handle these types of scenarios. Now, while I was debugging my application inside of the terminal here in VS Code, I was actually running the Stripe CLI. This was listening to that Stripe account and funneling any events that fire here to my application running locally on my machine. So if we take a look at the terminal, we can see different events like subscription updated, payment intent created, invoice finalized, and tons of other events that were firing that my application was able to inspect and now execute whatever type of custom logic we need based on whatever's going on. I'm gonna hide this terminal for a second because we don't need to look at it. Now inside of my Python app, I have a slash webhook route. And this is where those events are getting funneled to from the Stripe CLI. In here, all I do is I validate that webhook to make sure that it's actually coming from Stripe. And then I parse the body to see what type of event exactly was fired. If we scroll down a little bit, once we know what type of event it is, we can go ahead and execute whatever type of logic we need. So it might be subscription created, subscription deleted. Based on whatever your business workflow is, you're able to listen to the event, pull out any contextual data that's attached to that event, and kick off whatever necessary workflows you need to. Now, this is not gonna be an in-depth conversation about how to handle webhooks, but if this is something you'd love to learn more about, feel free to reach out to us via the comments or via social media as we'd love to hear about what your use cases are.